Hello, welcome to this video in which we will have a look at the service insertion possibilities of Cisco ACI and more concretely to the possibilities of inserting Cisco ASA firewalls. Here you can see we have a two-tier application. This is how it looks like in the ACI GUI. So as you can see, we have an external network and then we have a two tiers of servers. In our case, one will be a web server and the other one will be a database. Um, the communication in ACI is controlled over so-called contracts and in these contracts we have defined the protocols and, and ports that can be used to access any of the tiers and as well whether any firewall or layer 4 to layer 7 device will be used in this communication. Yeah, so um, that being said, I have here some, some um, terminal servers windows running that we can use to do some tests. For example, here I was pinging the application to, to prove that it's reachable. And here what I will show you is the uh, network filtering capabilities. We have no firewall, but still the network is preventing us from using some ports. For example, we configured um, some rules that prevent Telnet from working. Here I'm trying to access the application with Telnet. That's not working. SSH will work because we are allowing SSH, HTTP, and ping uh, to, to be used. And, and here we can, we can see how Telnet actually is enabled in the server. So it was actually the network blocking Telnet from being successful. Right, but obviously our application is not there to provide uh, Telnet or SSH services, but actually to provide these two tier uh, layers. So um, it's a web server uh, providing the page that we are seeing and behind that there is a database server providing a simple database with numbers. As you can see here, I put a name and I get a number. But I could as well try a SQL code injection like the one here that actually will give me all numbers in the database. This is possibly not what the uh, application designer wanted. So the question is how to prevent these SQL code injections from happening. Layer 4 filtering will not help here, so we need to put a firewall. Let's do a, an ASA, and for putting the firewall there, we will use this uh, control page that um, um, I, I configured, and this is just sending HTTP, uh, this is sending REST API calls to the fabric. I told the fabric I want a front-end firewall between the web and the external world. And here we can see that um, we had a firewall configured, and now uh, with a very basic config, no interfaces, no rule sets, nothing. And um, ACI, the, the ACI controller configured interfaces, routing configuration, uh, redirection to a source fire module, um, all kinds of things. And, and uh, as you can see, there was a short glitch, um, around 20 seconds, during which the application was not accessible. Now, at this point in time, the application should be accessible again. We can check that everything is working as it should. And now we can try to replay the SQL code injection attack. In this case, the firewall should block it. So not only we have the layer 4 uh, TCP port number protection from the, the network, but we have the next generation firewalling provided by ASA on top. So this is the setup that we have now. Um, and um, as you can see, um, this is how the firewall is configured. We could have a look at the access lists because it's very interesting. As you can see, the access lists, um, more concretely, the first one, this access list inbound, is very simple. It's a, um, a permit any, any. Um, uh, and then the protocols, uh, web, SSH, and ICMP. Those are the protocols we are allowing. We are doing any to any because actually the network is already taking care of the IP filtering. We don't have to do that in the firewall. So the ICI security functions simplify uh, greatly uh, the application, the firewall rule set. What we have just done is we have replaced the front end firewall through the back end firewall, through a back end firewall. So again, there will be a short glitch. We can have a look at our front end firewall now. It hasn't any configuration at all. ACI removed all config from the front-end firewall because it's not anymore in the data path. But if you have a look at the back-end firewall, and this series BE, BE st uh, stands for back-end, now you can see there are some interfaces configured, there are some um, uh, uh, 
There, there's no uh, uh, routing there anymore in the front-end firewall. There, there is even a service policy configured so that the ASA firewall will be using source fire um, services here. That's what SFR, SFR uh, stands for. And here again, the access list that we have configured, um, um, the access list inbound, is, which, is, which is controlling the traffic. Uh, we have enabled, uh, it's the PIP, uh, might be a mistake because the most important part is that uh, the, the MySQL port is working, this uh, 3306. Again, an example how to, how, uh, to combine uh, network access control lists with uh, uh, advanced firewall functionality. Well, now we can see whether the backend firewall is blocking the SQL code injection attack as well. We already saw how the frontend firewall was doing so, inspecting HTTP. Now we have a, a backend firewall inspecting SQL, so the, the, the calls between the web server and the database servers. Uh, and as we can see here, it's working as well. So you can decide whether you can use uh, whether you want to use a frontend firewall or a backend firewall in order to block these kind of attacks. Obviously, if you have a frontend firewall, then it will protect the web servers additionally. Uh, additionally to the security uh, uh, functions of ACI. Obviously, you could use both. You could use front-end and back-end, and this is what we have here. Um, again, our convergence time, and in the meantime, we can verify that every uh, all the configuration is back in, at the front-end firewall. All the IP addresses are there. The service policy for redirection to the source fire module is there. We can have, um, uh, and, and obviously, the back-end firewall didn't change because we already had it. We can have a look at our application now, but uh, I can I can guarantee you with two firewalls, there's no way that this SQL code injection attack is, is getting through. We can still uh, check it. Again, it's not working as expected. And um, well, um, the uh, the only thing left that I have for you in this demo is we will now remove both firewalls. Um, um, ACI will take out the firewalls from the data path it will take out the configuration from those firewalls as well. So we can um, connect to the firewalls and verify uh, that all configuration is gone. All interface configuration, all routing configuration, and all access list configuration that was there. If, um, um, if there's any access list left is uh, this one actually, which is which was there before ACI actually configured the file so that um, um, shows you that ACI will not remove uh, um, uh, existing config except in some cases. Right, uh, application is back there. So now we can double check. Um, now the SQL code injection will actually work. We check the basic functionality, we check the SQL code in the injection, and there we go. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Thanks for watching.